Well, perhaps two of the most talked about speeches from the United Nations General Assembly are from the leaders of two dueling nations. That's Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. Of course, Netanyahu had that unforgettable cartoon bomb with a clear red line drawn. His speech was aired in full on multiple mainstream networks. Iran's speech, however, was cut short. And that means viewers didn't get to see this. There is no doubt that the world is in need of a new order and a fresh way of thinking. An order that aims to revive human dignity and believes in universal happiness and perfection. An order which is after peace, lasting security, and welfare for all walks of life around the globe, an order that is founded upon trust and kindness and brings thoughts, hearts, and hands closer to each other. Authority is a sacred gift from people to their rulers, not a chance to amass power and wealth. Now, omissions like that make all the difference in how the Iranian leader is portrayed. It means the difference between a warmonger and someone opposed to war. So what else is be isn't being reported, and what are the ramifications of this kind of selective reporting? To discuss this, I was joined by Amber Lyon, three-time award-winning, Emmy award-winning journalist, photographer, and filmmaker. Well, I, I really worry here that the United States public is being led into another potential conflict with Iran, the similar way that we were led into the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, because you're starting to see the mainstream media really overhype the situation in Iran and omit important facts like what you just showed, Liz, where Ahmadinejad was saying that there are options for peace. But if you go back and you look at the way that CNN and, and other mainstream outlets covered that, they, they ignored that part of, of the speech. And, and if, you, if you look at all the propaganda being fed to the American public right now in terms of Iran, we have movies here coming out, Argo. We've got the mainstream media oversaturation of coverage of the Iran situation. And, you know, based on everything that's happening here in the U.S. with the mortgage crisis, the economy, the fact that most Americans are having uh, problems just getting by day to day, the fact that the mainstream media is overcovering Iran only says, one thing uh, to me, and that's that, that the American public is being propagated into another war, Liz. And why do you think that this is happening? Well, I, I think that it, it's a use of, of propaganda, and, and this is something that, that goes back to uh, the terms weapons of mass destruction. The American public was fed that phrase over and over and over, leading into the Iraq war, and, and now we're starting to see it as far as nuclear weapons and Iran goes uh, in, in the U.S., Liz. And, um, and, and I just fear that, that the public is continuing to be fed propaganda that unassuming Americans don't realize they're being fed to, to lead us into another potential conflict. Now, the job of the media is supposed to be, you know, this fourth estate and to, you know, show, uh, you know, all possible angles and basically just to, to report the truth. Um, what do you think it is? I know that you worked for CNN. Um, why would it be otherwise? Why would they be presenting um, war propaganda, as you call it? Well, I, I really can't uh, speculate as to exactly why this is going on, but I can tell you that uh, when I, I was working for CNN, we did have a, a documentary that we aired on um, the Bahrain situation, and that's where we have our naval base, which is right across from Iran, so we strategically want to keep that naval base, and it was very difficult to get stories on about Bahrain. I even uh, came out a couple weeks ago talking about the censorship of that documentary on, on CNN International. And um, uh, above all, Liz, I, I feel that the American public is not being fed the, the true story about what's going on in this region. And, and it's, it's very dangerous because when the public is constantly fed messages that, that are potentially leading us into a war that may not be necessary, it, it's, it's not fair to the American people and it's not fair to journalism because the truth isn't being told here. What's being told here is the way that these networks 
networks want to spin the truth, and that's leading us into another potential conflict with Iran. And I, I, I've been trying to tell my, my followers on my Facebook page and, and on Twitter to really open your eyes, because once you notice and, and start to, you take the blindfold off, you start to see all of this anti-Iran propaganda floating through the American mainstream media. And, and it's symbolic of exactly what was going on before the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, Liz. Now, uh, we do have a clip uh, of this documentary that you filmed. Want to take a look at it, and then we'll talk more about the documentary and uh, the way CNN reacted to it. Okay. The protesters seem to have disappeared from Bahrain's capital thanks to the intense military crackdown. We ventured into another side of Bahrain, a side the government didn't want the world to see, to find out where they've gone. We drove to the Shia villages, passing military checkpoints as we left the capital. So we're gonna hang out with these protesters for a little bit. This is what the protests look like today. Young boys who've been hit with tear gas. Now, uh, the documentary that we just saw a clip of never aired. It never aired on CNN International. Why not? Well, I, I still haven't been given uh, an exact reason as to why not why it didn't air. I went and visited with the president of CNN International, Tony Maddox, twice uh, on behalf of my dumbfounded crew, and, uh, and we were never given uh, a, an answer. And so I started uh, investigating the situation, Liz, after several employees who'd been at the network for years approached me and said, you need to look into this. There's something going on. It's very strange. They're not airing your documentary. And after some investigation, we found out that CNN International is actually making money from the Bahrain regime. They, they are a, a customer of Bahrain. Bahrain is paying CNN International to create content that shows Bahrain in a favorable light. Uh, and, and then air, also not only to create that content, Liz, to then air that content on CNN International. Uh, and in one of the shows, it was called I List Bahrain. It was back in uh, 2010. It was sponsored by Bahrain. And, and Richard Quest was live from the country for a week talking about the Formula One race and how progressive Bahrain wa was and how the crown prince was a reformer. Well, we, we saw in February 2011 that under the uh, crown prince's rule, the, the military troops shot and killed unarmed protesters in, in broad daylight. And, and this is very dangerous because what CNN is doing, and they're not only taking money from just Bahrain, they've also uh, produced similar content for Georgia, Kazakhstan, and other nations as well, Lebanon. And, and, and what makes this dangerous is they're not disclosing to the viewers that these sponsored programs are actually being sponsored. Or if they are disclosing it, it's in very small gray lettering at the bottom of the article. And, and that's dangerous not only to our foreign policy, but once again, and, and uh, making the American public and, and the public in general that's watching this network think that there are rosy situations happening in these countries uh, when, when that's not the case, as we've seen with Bahrain. And, and it's, it's defrauding viewers and it's defrauding their own journalists. Uh, I, I was not told, as a journalist working at the network, that, that this was going on. It wasn't clearly disclosed to me that at the same time I was investigating the Bahrain regime. Bahrain was a paying customer at, at CNN, Liz. And you did this all, you found this out all through your own research. Um, what did CNN tell you uh, in terms of when you were like, hey, why aren't you playing my documentary that I, you know, I, I risk danger and to, to bring this story? And uh, what, what did they tell you as to, you know, why they weren't playing it? Well, well, that's what made me more suspicious is because they never gave us an answer. They never told us why they weren't weren't playing it, even though uh, I asked the head of CNN Inter International twice about it, and even uh, bosses above me told me they didn't have answers for me, and I'd have to go searching for those answers. So, so that pretty much, as an investigative reporter, tells me that something's going on. And so on behalf of my crew, uh, who, you know, we, we, I, 
I got to get to the bottom of things, Liz. I mean, we had fixers and drivers in Bahrain who are currently now have been laid off because they helped us film that documentary. Uh, some who are continually still harassed. Uh, uh, Doctors Without Borders employee who actually drove us into these villages to show us doctors who'd been beaten by security forces. He risked his safety. Uh, several months after our documentary, his home was burnt down. And in part, activists say because he helped CNN with that documentary. I mean, these sources, these people on the ground did not know that at the same time CNN was taking money from this regime to make rosy content that would negate their content. Um, and, and they risked their lives. And I feel like CNN owes them an apology as well as an apology to viewers and its its own journalists for, for defrauding them with, with this information, Liz. Wow, Amber, uh, really, really eye-opening and really appreciate you coming on the show and, and telling us all about this. That was Amber Lyon, three-time Emmy Award-winning journalist, photographer, and filmmaker. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it.